we're just gonna restart this. So our video today is about the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, can, I can't say that right. Anyway, that's what our video is about today. And really it's about one thing that I thought about while I was reading it, because at the same time, it might've been the day before I started this reading, um, I was listening to a podcast I love called Sermon Smith that's all about, it's, 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 it's been done for a while, but I still go back. And I found an episode a couple of days ago where John Chandler, the guy who had the podcast, it's a great podcast, I'll link to it down below. He interviews, it's light, finding natural light in this Airbnb. There we go, there we go, it's a lot better. So I found an episode with John Mark Comer, who I'm a big fan of, and I was listening to it, and he began talking about his relationship with his friend, Mark Sayers, who he has a podcast with called This Cultural Moment, and I will link that one down below. It is super baller, and it is all kind of like a, a evangelical-ish look at cultural theory and post-modernity and secularism, the whole nine yards. I love it. It was, it was massively influential on me a few years ago. But they began talking about deconstruction, and their conversation about deconstruction um, just kind of made my eyes jump up because as I was reading Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, was that right? Um, <laughs> I kept thinking about, we're watching, especially Ecclesiastes, we are watching Solomon deconstruct. And deconstruction in some Christian circles is a really hot button topic right now uh, because it's about people really pulling apart their faith. And there's all sorts of things you can go into, but it's essentially this action that people come to. And I'm not going to talk about deconstruction too much on this video. Um, it's an action that people come to when they become extremely disappointed in the church or in theology or in Christianity, and they begin trying to, f it's, it's just, it's a gnarly thing. And it's a gnarly thing. But anyway, I'm reading Ecclesiastes, and I'm like, you can watch Solomon. He's deconstructing his entire life right here. Um, he's th these are the things that were worthless. These are the things I tried to do. But what was so interesting was, and then you got Proverbs, and um, I'm in a small group right now that reads a, prover a chapter of Proverbs every time it meets. And so I've been just kind of throwing myself into Proverbs. And I've gone through phases where I read a Proverbs every day. So I've been around Proverbs a decent amount, uh, more than Ecclesiastes. Uh, and I'm realizing just the contrast back and forth and back and forth of the righteous and the wicked, the righteous and the wicked. And it's not talking about righteousness and wicked in some sort of terms of judgment or soteriology or sinfulness or whatever. Um, it's talking about it in terms of behavior and actions and reactions, those sort of things. So all that say, so come back into this podcast and listen to John Mark Comer talk about how Mark had influenced his preaching so much because uh, Comer preaches or preached at that time in Portland, it was an extremely secular city and where deconstruction was kind of beginning to rear its head a few years back. This, this episode is maybe four years old. But what he said that you know, Mark really encouraged him to, to, to deal with this issue in his preaching by deconstructing culture and not deconstructing the Bible or faith. Um, to not be scared to point out the things that can tend to be a little gnarly or whatever, but to begin deconstructing broken systems because all about deconstruction is all about breaking apart broken systems and revealing things to the most basic core so they can be seen really as truthful. Um, and so I'm thinking about this whole conversation about them deconstructing culture, and I'm reading, really what was blowing my mind was Ecclesiastes, and just seeing Solomon go through this pattern of, well, this was worthless, this was worthless, this was worthless. Um, you've got this massive, massive, huge uh, idea that whether your translation reads worthless or meaningless, um, that really focuses and makes you think about like what actually brings the value, what actually brings the joy, what actually brings the purpose. Um, really that a whole enterprise of things, and, and it, it, it's made me, especially as I've come into, well, I'm still at annual conference with, uh, with the, all of my Methodist friends, it's, it's this thought I've had in my mind is, you know, there's a lot of different behaviors that normally happen. There's a lot of behaviors that I have that I will manifest uh, this one week a year. 
Um, because some of this is about church arguing. It's about us making decisions about things we disagree on and all this kind of stuff. And I, I've been realizing I find like negative energy in stoking the fire sometime. And going back to that Ecclesiastes, it's, it's, it's worthless because at its root core, when you break it down, when you deconstruct that behavior, it doesn't bring joy, it doesn't bring happiness, it doesn't bring, and I'm a, whole, I'm a holiness Methodist, so it doesn't enhance my sanctification. And that just really gets you to start thinking about the way that our own choices and our behavioral patterns work. And so I'm really thankful for these, these two books, Read in One Day, this podcast I listened to with a four minute conversation about deconstruction and realizing what does it mean for us to take this idea that's extremely popular in some circles of the church right now. And so, yeah, fun, fun read. I'm excited to jump into The Prophets now. I'm really excited to read probably entire Prophets in one day, like big, huge chunks. Like I'm, I've not looked ahead to see what the reading schedule looks like, but I'm fully anticipating having to read Isaiah in one day and Ezekiel in one day. And, and that'll be pretty cool. Looking forward to that. So I'll see you back in the next video and I might be at home by then and I kind of want to be at home. So thanks for watching these. Hang out in the comments below. Let's, let's keep, on the, keep the comment party rolling. But I'm Chad, I'm a pastor in Louisiana and I'm attempting to read the Bible in 30 days and I will see you in the next video.